Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome back to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. Anthony Alfredo made his trip to Texas Motor Speedway in his number 21 Death Wish Coffee Richard Childress Racing Chevrolet. Anthony had a strong run from the drop of the green flag and ran up front leading laps before getting into the wall while running in third. Let's hear a quick post-race recap from the NASCAR Xfinity Series driver. Well, everyone, I told you I love Texas Motor Speedway, and we'd be good here. I had a lot of confidence coming into this race. I love this track, and we actually had great speed. Our Death Wish Coffee Camaro was as fast as Xfinity Internet, and the guys at Richard Childress Racing have been bringing me really fast cars each week, and we continue to get better. Today, we actually took the lead and led some laps. We pitted earlier and stayed out, and on the restart there, uh, the 10 and the 54 got by me, and uh, I actually, on older tires, I was able to push the 10 past Kyle Busch, uh, past him, and then I passed Ross again and took the lead back on old tires, and we were able to maintain the, the track position and take control of the race from there. Uh, then, unfortunately, we picked up debris on the front of the car, and uh, I was covering the grill, so the engine was running so hot it was going to blow up unless I gave up the lead and got behind somebody to let the distorted air peel it off. And that's what we did, and once I did that, I tried to push to get back up there, and unfortunately, I got into turn one just a little bit high, and the ironic thing was it turned really well on corner entry to the center, and then once I hit the center of the corner, I was just too high in the PJ1 out of the groove, and when you're up there in the marbles, it's like ice. The front of the car just took off, and it went straight, and whether you touch the gas pedal or the brake pedal, it only gets worse, so all you could do is turn the wheel as much as you can and hope it sticks, and of course, it didn't, and I hit the wall, and we had pretty heavy suspension damage on the right front and right side body damage and we repaired as much as we could and just tried to go ride around the rest of the day and finish the race and unfortunately with 10 to go I hit the wall again and because uh, something broke in the right front so really tough day we had a really great car and it's just a bummer but the guys are telling me not to hang my head there's nothing to be upset about I'm really hard on myself but um, you know we had a great car and like they told me, when you're up there racing for wins and racing for the lead like that, stuff like that happens, and that's how you learn. You know, if, if it it's better than uh, just riding around trying to finish, you know, 10th every week, but we're going for it. And uh, they just want me to keep doing that, so learn whatever I can and, and go on to the next one. But everyone's been doing a great job, really proud of our team, and I uh, hope everyone enjoyed the race today. But I'm looking forward to the next one, carrying the momentum. We know we have the speed. I feel like we'll, uh, we'll be able to get one soon. So thank you everyone for the support. And, uh, see you in a couple weeks. Up next for Anthony, Michigan International Speedway in the ARCA division on August the 9th. Jesse Love was back in the ARCA Menard Series with Bill McAnally Racing in the Shore Lunch 150 at Iowa Speedway in his number 19 Napa Power Premium Plus Toyota. The event showcased all the stars from the ARCA Series, including both East and West drivers, as they shared the weekend with the IndyCar Series. The day did not go as Jesse had hoped. He started strong, racing inside the top 10, but a mechanical issue that forced him to pit. As a result of that repair, he went six laps down, finishing in 12th position. Here's a quick recap from the current Arkham Menard Series West Points leader. What's up guys, it's Jesse. Um... Back here in California now for a few days before we head back in the sprint car at Marysville. Um, ran Iowa last weekend in the ARCA series a few days ago and had some mechanical issues throughout the race. Uh, had really good speed, but had to come down pit road to uh, to fix some of those mechanical issues and, and went six, down lap, six laps down in the process, uh, just fixing some stuff. So um it's a bummer just you know kind of rode around there at the end to get some laps and and you know get my memory bank for when we do go back to iowa so learned a lot um you know overall just kind of have some things go our way but it's all good that's part of racing just part of it sometimes so we'll learn from it and we'll see you guys my next race is this wednesday in the sprint car and followed by another few nights of racing and then I'll, my next arca race is at evergreen speedway um coming up so we'll see you guys there thank you up next for Jesse, four days of sprint car racing starting on Wednesday at Marysville Speedway. Joey East was at Irwindale Speedway for a 100 lap Spears SRL Southwest Tour event driving for Nate Clower Motorsports. He qualified 20th for the feature event, but unfortunately ran into some tire trouble 
early on that hindered his progress and Joey finished the event in 19th. Next up for Joey, Madeira Speedway and the Nut Up Pro Late Model Series this weekend. Caden Honeycutt left it up to the fans to vote where he raced his sport modified and the fans chose RPM Speedway where he went bounty hunting. Caden finished second in his heat race but was disqualified due to some miscommunication on a rule. In the B main, he started 15th and picked up the win in only six laps. In the A main, Caden started 13th and worked his way up to fifth for a top five finish. Joe Valento and crew chief Kelly Byers made the trip to North Carolina to race pro late models for DLP Motorsports at historic Hickory Motor Speedway in the Carolina Pro Late Model Series. Joe started the feature in ninth and worked his way into fifth, and while battling for third with only four laps to go, Joe was coming out of turn four when another car made contact and turned him around, but he raced his way back to an eighth place finish. Bryce Bazanson also made the trip to the East Coast and raced at Tri-County Speedway in the late model division for Lee Falk Racing. The young Sonomas Washington driver had an impressive outing for his first time in a late model stock and seeing this track for the very first time. Bryce ran inside the top 10 and at one time was running fifth, finally bringing home a top 10 finish in seventh. On Saturday, Bryce made the trip to Hickory Motor Speedway for some valuable testing with plans to return for a race later in the year. Up next for Bryce, Super Late Models at South Sound Speedway on August 1st. Connor Mozak and his junior motorsports number eight Nick Taylor Interstate Foam Supply Team also saw action in the late model stock division at Tri-County Speedway on Friday. Connor fought hard inside the top five for the entire race and finished the feature in fourth position. Up next for Connor, Cars Tour at Hickory Motor Speedway on August 1st. Grant Thompson was at Five Flag Speedway for his fourth pro truck race of the season in his number 38 racing radios, Kurt Britt prepared truck. Let's go straight to the driver as he takes you through his weekend. Fans, Grant Thompson, I'd just like to give you a little place race recap video from our fourth race of the season at Five Flag Speedway in the WCI Parts Pro Truck Division. So qualified third, and uh, you know, we had a little bit of the struggles in the beginning, you know, couldn't get the best drive off. Some of it was on my part, some of it was on the truck's part, but um, had a late race caution, and we figured we'd have a pretty good shot to win the race, but um, came to the green flag, and we kind of gambled on the start a little bit, and we jumped it just a hair, but uh, we got a black flag, and we got sent to the rear of the field, but luckily the Corporate Motorsports Serendipity PFC Brakes Aerobody Chevrolet was able to come back up to a third place finish. Up next for Grant, Pro Truck at Chris Motorsports Park this Saturday. Cassidy Hines was at Colorado National Speedway in both her Pro Truck and Legend car. She ran two feature events in both divisions. In the Pro Truck, she qualified fifth and finished sixth in the first feature. She built on that finish and in the second feature, she finished fourth. In her Legend car, she finished 16th in the first event with a very tight race car. In the second feature, she made improvements to that finish and finished in 12th position. Here's Cassidy as she recaps her busy weekend of racing. Everyone, I had a great day of racing yesterday. I ran both my Legend and my Pro Truck at Colorado National Speedway. I ended up qualifying 19th in the Legend and 5th in the Pro Truck, so that was really good. And then for the first main for the Legend, I ended up finishing 16th. And then for the second main, I ended up finishing 12th. And for the pro truck, seeing as that was our top priority, we did extremely well in that. I'm very proud of that one. For the first main, I finished sixth. And for the second main, I finished fourth. So that was incredibly well for our fifth or sixth race out. Um, I would like to thank Kevin Stanky and Nick Cooper for all of their help that they did with the truck and with me and trying to get me adjusted to it and everything. And I would like to thank all of my sponsors, Frontier Restoration, SunWest Services, 
um, LL Acousticals, Ducks Unlimited, Impacted Raps and Graphics. Thank you guys for all of your help. Jake Bowman was also at Colorado National Speedway racing his legend car. In feature one, Jake came home with a fifth place finish, and in feature two, he finished ninth to round out two top ten finishes for the weekend. Next up for both Jake and Cassidy will be July 25th at Madera Speedway in round three of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series. Haley Constance took to the dirt in her 600 micro sprint for the 2020 Clay Cup Nationals. On night one, Haley grabbed the win in her heat race, but due to the invert, she started the feature in the back. She was working her way forward, but was involved in a wreck, ending her night early. Heading into night two, Haley finished second in her heat race and went into the feature race fourth in points. She started towards the back once again due to the invert, and unfortunately, during a yellow, a rock was wedged between the carburetor, causing her throttle to stick and ending her run early. On the final night, she was racing her way through the B main, but with three laps to go, a lap car came across her nose and ended her night. The good news is the car and the driver had speed all weekend, but sometimes you don't get the results that performance warrants. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store featuring merchandise from your favorite race face drivers. We will be back next week with more action from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham, thanks for watching.